we are back again. It is Tuesday. That's right. It is Tuesday after the three-day weekend. It is wonderful to be with you on Tech Tuesday. I have so named Tuesdays to be Tech Tuesday. Tuesdays. My name is Anthony Pika, and this is a VO's Journey, a show all about helping you, the upcoming voiceover artist, grow your business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. I want to welcome everybody from Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, everyone in the world. I want to welcome you and, uh, you know, tell you that I am excited about implementing Tech Tuesday because I think that all of us, whether you know we are struggling getting business, whether we are uh, we have a lot of business but we we can't seem to get the business we want, or we're just starting out, or wherever we are, the tech aspect of what we do is vital to being able to run a successful voiceover business from home. So today uh, for the tech. Tech, uh, Tech Tuesday, I want to talk to you about something that I get asked a lot of questions on. And, um, you know, most of the people that I work with are new into the business or just just coming in. And, you know, I always get the question, hey, Anthony, you know, how do I get started? But I also get a lot of questions about vocal booths. So today I want to talk about the different vocal booth options that you have and also, you know, what you can do just starting out or what you can do to upgrade your vocal booth. Um, so first off, I want to start off by saying that it's so important important to have an extremely well-treated uh, space, all right? Uh, I think that is something uh, that really makes a world of a difference. And, you know, all of the equipment, all of the wonderful gear, all of the things that, um, you know, uh, we want to get and we know we need to be successful, right? Uh, you know, they, they really don't matter if you are recording in a poorly treated space. There are ways to treat your space properly. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, but for me, I found uh, I've actually used a whole bunch, <laughs> but I've I found ones that works really well, uh, which is definitely the material that you use to absorb sound really does make a big, big difference. But I want to go into about seven different options for your vocal booths uh, and options that you have to, uh, you know, really get you a space that's going to get the sound that you want. And by the way, on a side note, no matter what you do, each space is going to have its uh, strong points and its you know bad points. So in order to do the best that you can, you want to treat your space the very, the very, the very best. But also, then you want to go in and you want to find the frequencies whether your space is uh, it still sounds boxy, or whether you know there's um, you know some sort of uh, uh, you know reverberation at a certain um, at, you know at a certain frequency. You can take those frequencies away in like your EQ or your parametric equalizer and things like that to where you can, you know, really tune your audio. But the first thing you need to do is treat your space. So the first thing I want to say is the closet. <laughs> we all know the closet is kind of the famous get started uh, in voiceover kind of thing. However, there is people who've built entire businesses working out of their closet. And I like to think of a closet as a pre-built booth waiting for you to treat it. OK, depending on how big your closet is, et cetera. Right. Um, you know, some closets, you, you know, are, are pretty darn big. And one of the best things about closets is some of the best material I've found to use to deaden sound and absorb it is clothing. Clothing is amazing. I mean, it really is. It, it really does an incredible job to, you know, just take take the sound and just, you know, it absorbs it because as you, you think about clothing, all those different layers, all the different fabrics, you know, sound's got to go through all of that. So each time it hits one and hits another and hits another, hits another, and it just, it absorbs it, right? It, it just kills those frequencies. So it's really wonderful to be in a closet. Now, the challenge with closets are if you are getting into a closet and you have a smaller closet, usually in order to get in there, you have to either A, 
set up your um, microphone and everything right at the tip of where the clothes are so that you're facing your microphone and then right behind it is the clothes, or you have to remove your clothes so you can get into it. And then you've got to treat it as if it was a portable or pre-built sound booth, all right, which we'll get into that. Uh, either way, it's uh, closets are wonderful. They're spaces that you can use that everybody really typically has, and uh, you know it's a great, great start for a vocal booth. Okay. Uh, by the way, while we're doing this, if you have any uh, tips or tricks or questions or comments about this or questions you have for another Tech Tuesday, please don't be afraid to pop it into the chat here or Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're watching, because I'd love to get this uh, kicked off. As you can tell, you know, we have ACX Thursday and Fiber Friday. I thought a Tech Tuesday would be really well. And we're also looking at something like maybe Pay to Play Wednesday, something where we can give a little bit more structure so that we um, can specifically hone in on what uh, what's happening, maybe Marketing Monday. I don't know. Um, but it, 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 it does help everybody know kind of what's happening, what to expect. So um, anyways, the next thing I want to talk about is one of my favorite things, and that is the Hobo Fort. <laughs> I, I know I've talked a lot about this, and uh, it was a name that I just came up with uh, when I, I put my own fort together. But basically, um, but basically, a hobo fort uh, that I created was PVC pipe and packing blankets. I wanted a self-standing uh, portable booth that I could put up and take down, but also that I could put up anywhere. So, for example, in my old house, I did not have a closet that I could get into and actually like set up a table and things like that. You know what I mean? I, I would have had to stand up. The only issue was is in my house, we only had really like two closets and they weren't really accessible in, in the situations that we had. Um, so I needed to create a self-standing booth, a uh, portable booth, if you will. So I went to, uh, I you know, I wanted to get something like four by six so that I could sit down or, or stand up. I had enough room to move around. And also the desk I had at the time, I had to find something that would go all around it. Plus I needed to be able to take it up, uh, put it up and take it down every single day because of the, the home I was in was very small so that was an issue um but you know the thing is is that i i was like man th this is this is something that I, i've never done before i've never created a structure however it should be pretty easy because pvc pipe is very simple to cut and they all you know and these are these are uh there's elbows and there's joints that you can attach to do your pvc pipe and on top of that, packing blankets, I could purchase those from Lowe's, you know, and you can layer them, et cetera. And all you have to do to connect them to the pipe is you buy some um, plastic clamps, you know. I mean, you can do a variety of other things, like you can grommet, you can put grommets in them and hang them like shower curtains. I know people do that as well and all that kind of stuff. But I needed a method that I could put up and take down quickly. And so what I did was I bought a big duffel bag and I, you know, I, I planned out each piece uh, you know, and I, I had numbers on them so that I could easily put them up and take them down. So that was the second option, a, a self-standing portable booth that's fairly inexpensive. You know, that you probably, the most expensive part of that is purchasing the packing blankets. You know what I mean? You got to purchase them to start off. But you can do that for a couple hundred dollars or less. And depending on whether you have blankets or not, it might be even less than that. So that was a really good option uh, for me uh, was that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about um, are more add-ons to absorb sound. So I like to think of these as miniature kind of portable booths. So for example, right, I'm going to just move back here and get the, uh, my, my, <laughs> it fell off, my Chaotica eyeball. Uh, and this thing here is, um, uh, a, a pretty expensive piece of equipment and it's really just a ball of foam with a hole in it. I don't know if you can see, trying to get the light, you can see there's the, there's a hole. That's where the microphone goes into. And, uh, you know, you can't use a shotgun microphone with this. Now, Chaotica, it's called Chaotica with a K. Uh, basically what happens is it sits on, um, <laughs> sits on the microphone like this on your stand. All right. And then this is the pop filter that you put in there. And basically the idea is that talking into this, the foam absorbs the the um, the sound waves so that you don't get the reverb. However, I have found that 
A couple, you know, I found some people these work wonders for, depending on the space they're in. Other people, and depending on your, you know, um, how deep, you know, your voice is too, these can work like next to none. So I've not had a lot of great experience with these personally. Um, but if it's something that you're having problems doing, there are some cheaper options, like $45, $50 options on um, Amazon that you can find, all right, from these things. And not the Chaotica. This is actually 200 bucks, so um, very expensive. But the $45 ones are, are pretty cheap, and, uh, you know, they... Uh, you know, for for what it's worth, if you if you have a, if you're traveling a lot and you've got to have a quick fix, this is something. But I definitely don't use this in my home studio at all, and it's it's a la last ditch effort. There's also portable booths that are called shields, and these are shield these are things that exactly what they sound like. They're a shield, and the idea is that when you speak, you'll have your microphone, and then the shield will be behind your microphone that it's supposed to deflect and absorb and stop the frequencies from you know, going, you know, and bouncing off the wall. But the thing is, is that, you know, you have to understand that as you are uh, depending about on a lot of things like your microphone, you know, what type of, you know, um, what type of pattern does your microphone have your pickup pattern, right? Is it a super like is a hyper cardioid, you know, microphone pickup pattern like a like a shotgun microphone, you know what I mean, where it's a very narrow beam of, uh, of a pickup pattern? Or is it uh, a, a large diaphragm microphone where the pickup pattern is very large? You know what I mean? If someone sneezes in the other you know, two rooms down, you're going to hear exactly you know, how loud it was. You know, that kind of stuff is, um, is important also as you're doing this. But shields and things like that are very popular in the industry, and they, you know, they do... Um, you know, people purchase them. So I have never bought a shield. But one thing that I did do, and I have not talked a lot about this. In fact, I don't know if I've ever told anybody this because I don't think I have any pictures. But the very first thing I built actually was not a hobo fort. Um, the very first thing I did was I actually went out and I got a Tupperware container. Okay. One of those, you know, those Tupperware containers. And I got a bunch of foam from like, you know, um, uh, like Michael's or something. And I got spray adhesive and I, I sprayed all the inside and I cut out the foam and I put it all on the inside. So the idea was is that I would put the mic into and at that time I had a USB mic, right, because I started out with a USB mic, um, the blue snowball mic. And I, it would sit in there, and I drilled a hole so that the cord would go through, and I could be able to plug it into my computer, and I would talk into this thing. Now, that's not a terribly bad idea because it encompasses all the way around you, and if you get your face in there, that's fine. But you got to understand, too, with a couple of these, uh, these concoctions and building these things, the biggest thing that I found when you have all of these different contraptions is actually being able to read the copy. Because, you know, when you, you, you start to, like, even with this thing, I mean, if you think about the microphones right here, <laughs> I've got to, hello, I've got to be able to speak here, and then I've got to be able to see whatever the copy is, right? So, I mean, that's, that's a challenge. And the same thing with this, this big thing I had. So, basically, what I did was, is, you know, as I, I tried to have um, uh, the, the, uh, an iPad or something up, you know, in there to try to do it. Now, I probably could have built it to where it, it actually stuck in there, you know, but the thing is, is that I tried that at the time I was so new, I didn't quite understand how much foam I actually needed so I used a very little bit of foam and that wasn't nearly enough so in, in actuality it created just a huge reverb chamber because my sound waves were going right right through the foam and hitting the the plastic background so that was <laughs> that was that was my very first attempt uh, at actually creating something to use as a portable booth if you will uh, if you use the right material those actually can can be pretty decent uh, but now I know a lot more about the right material, like using the right insulation uh, for those and using like four inches of insulation and et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, that's that's kind of like something that I learned a lot later. But at the time, that was my first attempt. 
So uh, wh- what what I want you to gather out of that story is don't be afraid to try things. Try, try, try. If you fail, that's fine. Keep going. Try something else. And by the way, you never know when you know something's going to pop up that's going to really work. I was actually working with a student who. Um, you know, is it was overseas and basically, you know, they wanted to be able to travel and do all of their work while they were traveling. Well, that's really tough to do all the work while you're traveling, never have like a base, a home base and not do it in studios, but do it out of like hotel rooms. So like, I, you know, I had the idea I was, I was going to come up with this plan and I went through and I did all of this stuff. And the reality is, is that, you know, it's, it's a challenge to really do it, but you can make it work. I would love for someone to, you know, create, but again, this had, had to travel. So that was the challenge, right? Because, you know, when you travel with something like this with foam, it's hard enough, but it's flexible enough to where, you know, it can absorb shock and things like that. It will rip, but it's pretty sturdy. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to rip easily, but you know, things like if you travel with the best material, like insulation and so forth, that becomes very challenging. So anyways, there's that, <laughs> but that goes into like the absorb, um, you know, absorbing on like portable booths or add-ons. They do have one and I can't remember it's for like a thousand dollars, but it's one of the kind of the coolest portable booths uh, that I've ever seen, but I've never used one. So I don't know if it worked, but basically what it is, is it's like this entire, um, covering white covering it sits on a big pole and you go underneath it and you come up and it covers your shoulders so it like covers everything and it's like lit inside now it only works with a large uh, like with a condenser a large diaphragm condenser microphone doesn't work with a shotgun mic but it comes through and it, it, you basically now it, it stands on its own but you basically come into this and it covers like it sits on your shoulders and it covers everything around you uh, I've never used one they're about like a thousand dollars but uh, if you know what I'm talking about you know the name go ahead and post it in there i've not used one but they looked pretty cool uh they looked really cool and it broke down to where you could you know you could carry it pretty easily but um you know i thought that would be a neat thing to try to recreate but there's so many logistical challenges with that especially if you want to travel so anyway, so that's that's what I got for the portable and the add-on stuff, okay? So the next thing I do want to talk to you about that you can start to do at home, uh, and we kind of talked about that with the PVC pipe, but more of a permanent DIY booth, okay? Do-it-yourself permanent structure uh, as if you were building, you're framing out a box, right? Like you're framing out a space that you're going to work into. And these are, uh, of course, a lot more work, but... If you know what you're doing or you hire someone who knows what they're doing or you spend a lot of time learning what to do, these can be very valuable and they can save you a lot of money as opposed to purchasing a pre-built booth. The challenges with them, though, is is all of those things you have to learn if you don't know how to, you know, build a structure, make sure that it is safe to get into, make, you know, learn how to frame out your walls appropriately, you know, all that's so finding a big enough space to put a permanent structure. You might not have a place in your house that you can do that. You know what I mean? That Ah, that's what it is. The Isovox. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. It's called the Isovox and like the Isovox 2 or something like that. It's in the YouTube chat. Um, I-S-O-V-O-X. I, I don't know. It just looked cool to me. Um, but anyways, I've never used it, but I've, I've always kind of wanted to, you know, maybe demo it for someone just because it, it looks kind of cool. But anyways, uh, yeah, so what I was getting at was building your own structure. Uh, and you can simply do that by, you know, like framing out you know, you actually frame out a structure with studs, you know, two by fours and, you know, and, and, and actually, and all in all, you know, you don't even have to use two by fours. I mean, I'm talking about building, I mean, that would be a very sturdy structure, you know, and you build it almost like a house. I mean, like you would frame a house, right? But, you know, that way you can have insulation in the walls. That way you can build a ceiling. You can have a sturdy enough place to attach a door. You know, you can make it a real booth and you can and you can tailor it to the size that you want. But with that, again, comes a lot of logistical things, right? Like how you connect all those things. And if you know how to even do that, you might not be savvy with power tools. You might not, you know, have ever done something like that. But if you have or you're up for it, you know what I mean? It is a great experience, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it it's one of those things where I was fortunate because, 
Uh, I was in tech theater for a long time, and that's all I did was design and build, well, not sound booths, but design and build things that, you know, uh, were not things that normally are done, right? You know, so build houses on stage, build things and spaces and figuring out how to make them fit and how they could be sturdy enough for people to get on and move and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I, I was fortunate enough to have that ability, you know what I mean? So that's like I made my table and a lot of different things. Um, but moving on to the booths, you know, I decided actually not to make my booth and to actually go with uh, a pre-built booth. Now, I think, and uh, as I tell you this, it's, as you know me, I like to be fully open with you guys. I think I got caught up in the excitement of purchasing uh, a whisper room. And that's exactly what I have is a whisper room. And I think back on it now, and I, I look back because I've had this for about uh, almost a year. And um, no, 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 not almost. A, I don't know how long I've had, maybe about six. No, no, maybe about eight months. I had to go back because I made videos of me going through it. So it's, it's been under a year that I've had it. But anyways, the point I'm making is, is that I was um, I got caught up in the excitement of having a whisper room and, you know, because because of the name and everything. And, and I thought that getting that would solve all of my problems when it came to noise and it came to reverb. And I also bought the uh, super package right for the whisper room now don't get me wrong i absolutely love my whisper room so that's another option there's whisper room but i believe there's also um it's called is it audio blocks or something if you know what i'm talking down in there you could post it in the uh, chat as well but there's also one where uh you come and you put it together like blocks uh which looks really cool and i looked at that one as well and the pricing is similar uh, but one is uh, one was overseas because I think that one was overseas, and then Whisper Room is here in in the country. Studio Bricks, thank you. You guys know what you guys know your stuff. Colin put it in there. Studio Bricks. So I looked at Studio Bricks too, and that was pretty cool. Uh, I, I thought that setup was pretty neat, actually. But I got a Whisper Room, and uh, I wanted a four by six Whisper Room. And I now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my whisper room and I recommend it to anyone who's serious about it. But also I look back on it and said, you know, I could have I could have built my own studio out of wood. However, what I like about my whisper room though is that it is portable in the sense that I could take it down. Now it's a pain in the butt to take down, don't get me wrong. Because once you get these puppies up, especially the bigger ones, it's, it takes a long time to get them down. But at the same time, if I ever had to move, you know what I mean, and I had to take this down, I could take this down, pack it, you know what I mean, or have some people help me pack it because I didn't see, need some help. And I could take it in and put it back up at another place and it would be the same. Whereas if I built a structure, I would pretty much have to, you know, unless I used screws and stuff like that. But see, then you got to use the right materials to make sure it's soundproof on the other thing that you use. But then I would have to tear it all apart and I probably wouldn't be able to, to keep what I have. But for the booth, though, the Whisper Room or Studio Bricks or these things like this. Now, I don't know about Studio Bricks, but the Whisper Room comes as a shell. And it's like a box. So you have to treat the inside of it, right? And I did a lot of research on this because I didn't know if you just get it and it's all good, right? So I had got my Whisper Room and I actually purchased the um, up, upgraded package and all this stuff for it um, and uh, turned out to be quite a lot of money. Um, and I was very excited about it and I still am. But what part got me was is that the actual reverb or or the the packages I bought that actually work didn't work very well. So and as I I dug further into it, most people said that then they got their whisper rooms they had to do all the insulation themselves uh, to stop the reverb. All right, they do really well on sound and they do have a single and a double wall option uh, to have uh, to get rid of extra sound, but the reverb in there it's 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 horrible if you just have the plain box so you know i used i ended up going with um uh owens corning whatever right 702 i think that's what it is and um 
and it, it's an insulation. It's really, really, really great for voice uh, 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 sound waves. And also, I got the four inches thick. So basically, I just put it on the walls, and you know, and then I still have my other package. But I have that my booth, and I, I I've shown some pictures of it. But man, I've got like. I've got padding on the ceilings. You get padding everywhere. Like, I've got so much different stuff. Now, the things that you see behind me, those really are for aesthetic value. I'm not saying that they don't work, but honestly, they don't work. <laughs> they don't work for me. The quality of the work that I want to put out, okay, needs, you know, for me, uh, needs to be above and beyond. And that's what I think, you know, you should be striving for as, as well that's what you're striving for when you start off you're not going to be able to be there because you're just starting but as you get better you're, you're doing that so the materials the materials that you use are vital to absorption and I, I found that that insulation works amazing and you know you could even put it up throughout your room and if I knew better at the time I could have probably even for I could have probably even put together a PVC pipe a PVC pipe fort and then taken the um, the Owens Corning and made sleeves out of um, out of fabric and just had them go in there like pillow sleeves. And I've actually thought about making those. My wife sews, um, but that's kind of one of those things because one of the hardest things about getting insulation right is you have to deal with insulation. However, they do make because they came with they do make the harder insulation, meaning like it comes in sheets so that you don't have to deal with it like in the rolls and the sheets are really nice you still need to you know wear gloves and stuff for safety purposes but you know those are a lot easier for you to deal with but you still can't just use that you have to put some sort of covering over it do you know what i mean and um you know so there is material out there like acoustical material too for like fabrics like that 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 absorbs it as well so anyways um you know i've i've used that in my booth and it's made a world of a difference it's unbelievable so if all you had to do was buy a whisper room all you have to do is buy a whisper room and then just get that insulation and put it on every single wall you know what i mean and you'll be i mean you'll be good to go it'll be the best sounding thing you've ever you've ever heard in your life because four inches though four inches to pick up the the bass frequencies uh, and it also gives you some information about that but Anyways, uh, again, I don't know about Studio Bricks, uh, and there are some other ones out there that, you know, work, but uh, that I that I know of. But I, I'm not very; they're not very popular, or they're not as popular as Whisper Room and and Studio Bricks, at least not here in the U.S. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, there's there's lots of things that you can do, and lots of materials. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say because I know some things are popping up and down here on the chat. So let's go ahead and pop over here. Um, there's probably a million other things, too, that I didn't mention. But for time's sake, we'll go ahead and get into the chat. B-Doggy45, what's up, my man? Angela, what's up? Ben, did you set up your current Apollo presets, or did you get someone to set up rack processes and presets for you? Great question, Ben. So I do have the Apollo Twin, and I went ahead and worked with the man, Tim Tippett's, to set up my presets and everything. So um, now that I've learned it, um, you know, thanks uh, to him, I'm good to go. So I can do it myself now, but he helped me set it up. And so basically, now with my Apollo Twin, which is a digital interface, and now don't get confused, right? Because your audio interface can be digital or analog, all right? Even though each of them turn the signal into a digital signal, but they either can be digital or analog. I have a digital one. Most people have an analog one if you're just starting out, like the Presonus, like the Scarlett 2i2. Those are all analog, meaning that you have to plug in inserts like the DBX286S. You have to plug that into your interface in order for it to actually do something pre done to your audio before it goes into your computer. Whereas my Apollo Twin is digital, meaning that I can have uh, basically unlimited software that does it built into the Apollo Twin that will do it for me without inserts. It's already built into it. Do you see what I mean? So it has its own like operating system, a part of it, so that so all those presets are done before I record. So like what you're hearing right now, there's compression added, there's frequencies that are being taken away, and there's EQ, there's high end and low end being added, just so it, it makes a better sound for you before, because uh, I don't do anything to this because this is live, right? Same with my booth, I pretty much record something and it is done, all right? I might 
clean up one or two things here or there, but basically once I record something, that's it. I'm finished. Okay, so I don't have to go back and do all sorts of, you know, EQing and, mo and, and compression and all of this stuff. So it's really nice to have presets set up. However, again, it also depends on your equipment. Now, the Apollo Twin, they start about seven or eight hundred um, for the, the single or the duo, but the core processor. And then there's like two or four or something like that. It goes up. It can go up to like twelve hundred. But anyways, uh, yes. Yeah, so the good question, Ben. And that's the answer. John, what's up? Steven, good to see you. Um, thank you, man. DJ, hi, Paisan. <laughs> Got any pasta? Uh, no, I do not. But thank you for asking. Uh, what do you say? Gilligan's Island Hut works. <laughs> Okay. B Doggy 45. I have a computer with a rally, really, with a rally, with a really loud hard drive. So I have it on the closet of another room, and I'm trying now to get all the cables running across the house to make it work. Yeah. So that's another thing, too. When I first started uh, and I did build my Hobo Fort, I had all my computer, like I have an iMac. I have a new iMac now. Com uh, well, it's newer than what it was then, but, you know, I had my interface and all my stuff and i even put speakers in there eventually so all of these things made noises do you know what i mean and it was all right here in the recording so it was noisy no matter what i did at this point what i did what i do now um you know because you learn right is i have everything outside right because this is my editing station this is my broadcasting station and then i run a dual screen in my booth so the only thing in my booth besides the padding and everything else that's in there is my microphone and a computer screen that's the same size and everything as the computer i use out here and i just do a dual screen so i can i can control everything in my booth but I just run a cable and it's right now. I'm fortunate enough to have a room uh, in my, my, my newer house uh, that it's just dedicated completely to my studio. So, you know, I have my own office room and uh, it's big enough to have all of this stuff in there uh, as well. So that's fortunate for me. But in the case that you're talking about, absolutely. One thing that works well is like Mac minis or uh, towers, like PC towers. Those are great. The all-in-ones are hard when we're doing what we're doing because, yes, they're less footprint, but at the same time, they're all in one, so they're all right here, and the processing is going to be constantly going, especially depending on the interface you have. Now, since I got the, before I had the Apollo Twin, like I said, which is digital and has its own computer system built into it, a lot of the other ones do not, right, like the 2i2 and, and the Personas and things like that. So what happened was is they themselves they themselves were actually passing on. So the processing, the majority of the processing was going on with your computer or my computer. So my fan was always running. So it was always, right? It was always running. And if that happens to you or you're on a laptop, you know, using like Adobe Audition or any of these things. And while you're, you're recording, especially long, it's going to get hot and it's going to run and that fan's going to turn on. So something that you can do is getting a tower, putting it in a different space or outside of the room and running a cable in will help tremendously. Uh, let's see. Run, hide. Hoover is here. I am the face. <laughs> Steve, what is the, what the, the face? The face made for voiceover. Um, Zach, I imagine the eyeball does nothing for blocking out outside noise. Absolutely. Nope, it doesn't. And honestly, you know, it, I think so. Here's the thing for people with deeper voices. You know, it's so hard to catch those frequencies, right? Those are the, the, the deep frequencies. The low frequencies are the hardest, right, to stop. So the higher pitched ones, I find that women use it. It works a lot well for women or higher pitched voices. Well, I mean, women can have lower pitched voices, but people with the higher pitched voices, it works very well with, I think, because those, you know, it, it, it's easier to trap those uh, high pitched frequencies, but the lower ones are tough. So really they just pass through bounce off, come right back in. And it just, it's a mess. And it also depends on the microphone you're using too. All right. If you're using like an R, you know, like a, a one with a really big pickup pattern and you know, that's a mess. But so you want to use one that has a really narrow pattern. Um, let's see. I'm sure you need mass to block sound. So sure. So sure. It can't stop sound. Right. Okay. I, th I think I got you. <laughs> hey, Anthony, what's up? Boss Sinai, good to have you. Iato, Iato, 666. Booth Junkie said portable ISO booths aren't very good. All right. Uh, let's see. Zach said, you may be talking about the ISO box. Yep, I got that. I'd like to build my own booth from scratch one day. This is Boss. I'm sure it would save me a lot of money, and I'm mechanically inclined to begin with. So 
absolutely. I agree. And I want to say something, though, about this. And I've learned this the hard way, even though people don't always agree with me on this. I feel like I should be able to do the majority of everything that needs to be done <laughs> in my life, like the plumbing, like the electricity, like you know, repairs on my house and all this kinds of stuff. But what I've realized is, is that, you know, I could do it halfway or I could pay a professional to do it the best as possibly can. Now, depending on where you are financially, I understand those things. But where I'm going with this is, is that absolutely you can build it, you can learn, but don't put off getting the things you need while you're waiting, I'm talking from experience here because <laughs> I put off many things because I felt like I should do it, but then it never gets done because I don't do it or I don't take the time to learn or whatever when I should have honestly just paid someone to get it done or figured out a different way so that it actually got done. Do you know what I mean? So don't wait. That's my only advice to you. Don't wait. Uh, let's see. DIY. In my case, is definitely destroy it yourself, <laughs> John. Greg, almost one thousand dollars making three three by three panels per wall plus a ceiling. Nice, nice. I mean, that's thousand dollars for a, a a really good booth is is very inexpensive. I auto. I I like your modesty. I can't stand people that tell newvios they need this insanely expensive stuff. You don't, you can, uh, you can if you want, but you don't have to. And that's right. That's right. And I, and I want to, and I want to say that, uh, you know, one of the, one of the best things to remember is when, when, and when we were, when I was starting out, you know, I, 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 I knew that, well, I didn't know, but I understand that I was competing with people just like me. And there's a lot of people who are just starting out on a shoestring budget, no budget at all, and they're doing the best they can. All right. But just know that as you go along, you want to reinvest the money that you make from your business and buy better equipment because it will help you compete on a higher level. OK, and get better business as you get up. But you can still start off. And I've done videos about this wherever you are. Don't wait to start until you have the magical equipment, because I'll be honest with you, no matter where you go, you're always going to want more. You know what I mean, every single day I have to stop myself from buying a new microphone. <laughs> I don't need it. I've got, to my opinion, I've got the best microphones that I need for my business, but I still want to buy more because I'm like a gear junkie. Right. So, you know, it is what it is. But yes, you don't need tons of expensive equipment to start. And I, I think I did. I, I said, you know, for me, I got started under $300 in my business. That's how I got started. And a portion of that was a gift card from my mom. All right. We have studio breaks. That's right. That's right. Not including foam acoustics. Greetings. What's up, Dalton? <clears throat> Jim says an SB is a European company. They're very expensive. Right. Yep. Greg says, how much did your whisper room cost? My whisper room cost about seven to eight grand. Seven to eight grand is how much mine cost. Uh, so I cringe when people are like, I found one for twelve hundred dollars. And it's I'm like, ah! but that's OK. It's worth it. It's all paid off now. <laughs> but that's how much I paid for mine. Yep. My closet fort is working perfectly fine for now. When it when the time comes, I'll change over. But at the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't need to. Colin says, Tim Tippett's is a great resource for constructing your own panels and turning your booth a good investment. Tim's great. Love Tim. Uh, let's see. Boss, that I do need do need to look into panels. Least so my wife can have all her good towels back. Towels are actually really good. Towels are really good. Towels are very good, but you got to layer it. When I first started, the biggest mistake I made in trying to soundproof thing was I just grabbed whatever and put one layer. But when you're dealing with this stuff, you got to layer it. So by right before I got my whisper room, my hobo fort, I had about, I'm not kidding you, I had about seven layers of different blankets. Not just packing blankets was two layers. I had two layers of packing blankets, but then I had about five layers of different blankets in different areas. All the heavier blankets, I had them lower for the base frequencies. I even had foam. And I mean, I had put every conceivable thing into that booth to absorb sound. I mean, it was stuff was shoved in. I mean, you know, foam and and blankets and towels and everything was shoved everywhere I could to do what you know to make it the best. Now, when I moved here into my new house, that was something that I could do because I didn't have to take it down. When I first started, I couldn't do that because 
it was too much work. I couldn't take it up and down. So the sound it was was the sound I got. But I listened back to those things, and they weren't that bad. But mind you, I was just doing audiobooks at the time, so it wasn't something that I was doing as much commercial work as I do now. Uh, and it does matter. It does matter what work you're doing and what the people are expecting to get. And especially if you're trying to record like through Source Connect or something or you're, you know, you're doing things live like that, that can be challenging. Um, the thicker, the better. Yes, Tim Tibbetts has a fantastic YouTube video on how to use OC uh, sheet insulation to make sound panels. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a bunch of other ones, too. But Tim's is great. Uh, the Booth Junkie had put a great one together originally, I think, before Tim's. Uh, and that's still out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I learned how to frame mine on my own um, just because I, I know how to do that stuff. But absolutely, there's some great videos out there for it. Uh, I live near a highway. I know they they will they work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, boss says, "Oh man, that cannot be fun to deal with." I use it as motivation. The trials we face in pursuit of victory. Absolutely. Cheers to that. Cheers. Hey Anthony, when you get a second, check uh, your Twitter DMs. No rush. Just wanted to wrap with you real quick on some advice off this topic. All right, cool. John says regarding hard drives, I think solid state drives are the way forward. Best performance. Quiet. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the computer I have right now is actually half solid state drive and the other one is updated because it's the it's the iMac not the pro but the iMac right underneath it and uh absolutely solid state are great and as time goes on they'll become cheaper do you know what i mean everything will be solid state um steven brotherton any recommendations for a don lafontaine style voice uh steven i when you say recommendations do you mean like what type of voice work should you do well i mean you know, I think that at this time, you know, that voice still has a place in, you know, um, uh, intros and, you know, movie, you know, movie intros and YouTube intros and podcast intros and things like that. But it also has a place in, you know, narration work. I think it has a place all over. There's character work. I mean, I think at this point you need to be finding work wherever you can. Do you know what I mean? Don't limit yourself. OK, find work wherever you can, whatever people are going to hire you for. But make sure that you do know that, you know, that was kind of one of those things where, you know, he wrote the book. You know, he made it famous, that style of voice. But when you have that style of voice, you know what I mean? It becomes he was very it was a very unique voice that belonged to him. So when other people try to recreate it, in your case, you might have it. So don't be afraid to go after that. Don't be afraid to be trailer, a trailer voice. But there's more than just the voice, right? There's also the performance. So my advice would be to study the performances as much as you can, as well as what's happening now. Because remember, you know, I'm not saying that he wouldn't be hired again today because I know he would be in a heartbeat because he was amazing. But, you know, we deal with a lot of newer things, too, and people want different things, right? So trailers are different now. Uh, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. Um Let's see. Uh, I got you. I'm not Superman. <laughs> ben says, I built my own booth. It cost about 800 pounds, so about $1,000. Not the easiest thing to do, but possible recorded spots for some top brands in it. Wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Jim says, even if you can do it well, many times it's worth the money to hire an expert so you can focus on building the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. I to And I totally agree with that, Jim. I totally agree with that. Uh, Zach says, I got lucky with a perfect space, former office in my bedroom and covered the walls with studio foam and packing blankets. Also built walls. I stuffed with old cloths. Not good for, from Salvation Army. Uh, not good for the Salvation Army. That's awesome, Zach. Man, whatever works. Uh, Philippe, is that your vent fan or laptop fan I hear? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's actually a fan that I have running. Oh, can you see it right here? It's right down here. Yeah, I got my fan running. <laughs> Um, when I go into my booth, though, I, you can't hear it. Uh, let's see. They are too pricey. Thanks for today's session. It's been very helpful. Awesome, you guys. Well, hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Close. I got you, Zach. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance, please make sure you subscribe uh, to this as well as like, share, retweet this. If you're on Twitter, make sure you follow me on Instagram or like my page on Facebook. And if you have any questions for Tech Tuesday or any thoughts, please 
please feel free to put them in the comments. Share this with somebody as well. We are almost to, well, we're at 754 subscribers. So, subs, so subs have gone up a lot on YouTube. I'm super excited. Uh, I want to get to a thousand uh, within the next couple of months. So, uh, Keep sharing. <laughs> Keep coming by. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Tomorrow, I will see you at 1 o'clock. All right, you guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.